Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our next Launch and Learn. I'm just, uh, we're going to give it about another minute and a half for folks to continue to join because the, the beeps are coming fast and furious on this end. So bear with us, please. Get them. Hello. <laughs> All right, folks, I think we will get started. We've still got folks coming in, but we can at least walk through my early dry introduction part of it. If you would go to the next page, please, Matt. So just gonna quickly go through introductions for folks, what this program is about, the launch and learn concept, as well as what this particular session is. Um, then Matt Lloyd is gonna lead us through problem management in SOW. And then we'll have a little bit of time at the end for Q and A. Please do put questions in the Q&A feature itself whenever you can, rather than the chat, and we will have folks watching that. Uh, the goodness of putting it in the Q&A is we can share out the answers with everyone afterwards and share those as an FAQ in the long run. And next. My name is Janet Acorn. If you haven't met me, I am very surprised because most of you I've seen several times. I am a director in outbound product management here at ServiceNow. I've been here, um, I said seven years. Apparently my anniversary is just six years. It only feels like seven. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I still love it. Quite honestly, it does not feel like any time has passed. I've got about 28 years in ITSM through many industries. Uh, and have been doing a little bit of everything, but service operations, workspace, and the fulfiller experience, which is all about how you work with incident, problem, change to move things along, is really my passion. So I'm here to engage with you, our customers, get feedback, understand what works, what doesn't work, tell you what's new in, in the product, and uh, try and keep this ball moving. Yeah, my phone's doing something weird for the other call. I've made it and Jacinta? I'm just going to mute you. Sorry. <laughs> Thank right. you. Sorry, and I was trying to figure out how to do it. My phone was misbehaving. Thank you. No worries. <laughs> I'm just... And I enjoy all things water and travel. And with that, I will let Matt introduce himself. Hello, everybody. Yeah, my name is Matt Lloyd. I'm a, an ITSM um, ITSM inbound product manager. I've been with the company nearly eight years, so seven and a bit years. Um, I'm in the core ITSM product team, and um, so I'm focused on problem management. I do a couple of other things as well, but for today's purposes, I'm I'm the, the person who looks after problem management. I've got loads of different hobbies, but just for now, I've got a few. So I love watching motorsports, mainly Formula One. And this last weekend, I was at the gloriously sunny Silverstone, Silverstone Festival on Saturday. It was tipping it down all day, absolutely pouring with rain. So we managed to, to hide out for most of it, but it was it was quite wet, but not on Friday and Sunday. So we got the best. <laughs> I also love crafting. So that whether it's 3D printing or I've got um, a cutting machine called a cricket or a cry cut. And I love jogging as well. So yeah, that's a bit about me. Cool. I just learned something new that I didn't know about Matt. And I will <laughs> launch our first poll. Uh, I also have a cricket machine <laughs> and you? my husband does 3D printing and you would love our craft room. <laughs> oh, we'll definitely have to talk some more after this, Janet. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're just trying to figure out where are you on your journey to service operations workspace? Are you using it? Are you getting started? Not planned? You know, or if you want to comment in chat, feel free to do so. 
and I'm just going to give it a few moments. I like to make sure we get to at least 75% on our uh, polls before we end off. So I need at least two more people. <laughs> <laughs> hint, hint, nudge, nudge. We're at 70%. We're not coming forwards. <laughs> There we go, 77%, perfect. And sharing results, it looks like 50% of you are really just getting started along the way, but 24% of you are underway in your launch. So that's great, great to hear, thank you. And with that, next slide, what we're getting into is really what to expect from Launch and Learn. We are doing these weekly sessions to give you a walkthrough, a demo, understand what there is available to you in service operations, get your feedback as well as we're going. So it's really about being vocal, asking the questions, whether it's coming off mute to do so, that's fine, but also putting them in Q&A so that we can take the goodness questions and answers and share them with everyone. So please do. And at the end of our series, we will be sharing out um, a feedback survey to understand how useful these sessions were for you and so on. And next slide. What do you get from this program? And what is it we want answered? We want to know what's going to help you on your journey. Are we thinking about things the right way? You know, what solutions are missing? And what you get is the opportunity to talk directly to our product managers and, and our engineers are sometimes on the call and things as well and get to speak to each other and understand the challenges you're sharing with your other customers who are on and where you are in those things. And that way we all get to learn and hopefully create a new product for you in the end. And next, this is where we are. We are on a third session of this second series doing problem management. And next week, just so you know, we'll be starting two sessions on modern change. But this is your opportunity to hear all about problem management. Next slide. You have all seen this and love it, I am sure. This is our legal safe harbor notice saying that if we do talk to you about futures and we will call out when those things are future, um, please don't make any decisions until it's actually general availability. We'll let you know what those things are and so on. But really, we're talking about what is there today, what can you make use of, and what is coming very, very soon. <coughs> and next slide. And I believe I have one more poll to run here. Mm -hmm. Yes. And me while I find the right poll. That's right. We're getting you all limbered up this morning, afternoon, or evening with a couple of polls. <laughs> Where are you on your problem management journey? Uh, good answers are coming in fast. Mm -hmm. Right about 45, 50%, 60. Moving wow. along. That's a big jump. Okay. 78% already. Perfect. All right. So, based on this, what we have is we have 95% of the attendees are using problem management classic. Excellent. Good to hear. I don't usually get to talk to that many people using problem. <laughs> and we have just a couple using it in SOW and a couple who are brand new. Excellent. Thank you. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Matt to take you through the next. Thank you very much, Janet. Yeah, so now we're, we're not going to cover all the problem and the, the backstory to it, but we're just going to talk a bit, basically lead you towards what we're doing for <clears throat> Problem in Service Operations Workspace or SOW. But before we do that, let's just take a quick recap of Problem in Classic or UI16. So we have, and what we're talking about here will apply to SOW as well later on. So we have four main roles in problem management. There's a problem task analyst. This is like a limited access role for people who aren't part of the problem team. Maybe they're not in the service desk, but you need them to work on problem tasks. So it could be like an application developer, someone from legal where you need some information from them, or you know maybe they're helping you do the root cause or something like that, and they're outside of your team. So this is a limited access role. 
Um, it, so it's someone you wouldn't give full ITIL um, permissions to or things like that. So that's what that's created for. So it's a role where they work on a problem task and they would manage that problem task through its whole life cycle. They can also read the problem that's associated with that problem task as well. Then the next three roles are basically more around the full problem management. So you've got your problem coordinator. They work on a problem or a problem task and they manage it through its life cycle. And they can also act as a problem task analyst. And all of these build on top of each other from this point. Then you've got your problem manager role. They're responsible for the overall problem management process and can configure the problem management settings or properties. And they can also act as a coordinator as well. And then finally, and this one's not used as much, but we wanted to have it to have the equivalent of what incident already had, you have your problem admin. So they can delete problems and problem task records if you need to, and they can act as a problem manager. So there's just a quick recap of the roles that we've got inside of um, ServiceNow's problem management. Okay, then moving on quickly to the life cycle, because again, this is what we brought into Service Operations Workspace. So we have, if you're using the base problem lifecycle, and I'll tell you what that means in a minute, but if you've got that, then there are six states that we've, we, we included from Madrid, basically. So there's new, assess, root cause analysis, fix in progress, resolved and closed. And then these other lines are the actions you can take between those different states. Um, so, you know, you can, when you're in new, you can assess the problem to move it to the assess state. That's where it's assigned to an individual to, you know, gather more information, see if this is a problem that's going to be worked on. If it is, you confirm this is a problem that moves you forward to root cause analysis and so on. But yeah, you can basically move forward to fix the problem, resolve it, complete it. And then you can always mark as a duplicate or cancel the problem at various different stages as well. And you can go backwards to reanalyze. So from closed, resolved and fix in progress, you can go back to the root cause analysis stage if you need to as well. So a quick overview of the problem that we've got the process. And then this is what it looks like in classic. So unless you've added additional things in there, this is what the base version of problem looks like. So up here in the header is where you see the life cycle action. So you've got in this case, and these, these actions are um, content, uh, context sensitive. So they're relevant to the where you are and they're right now in the life cycle of this problem. So at this point, we're in the root cause phase. So you could fix the problem. You can mark it <laughs> as a duplicate. You can cancel it. You can accept the risk of not being able to fix this problem for now. Um, and they're the main actions that we've got. So one more quick poll before we jump on to looking at what we're doing for uh, service operations workspace with problem this year. And what we're interested in here is where do your problems come from in your organization? Um, you know, are they coming from your uh, from a major incident? Agents working on incidents, the incident team manager, coordinators, problem managers, analysts, is it automation that you've got? And then, so what's the primary um, source of those? And then just tag some secondary ones as well and let us know. And then we can have a quick chat about that depending on the results. Perfect, we're at about 55%. And folks, I apologize. I have no idea why Q&A is not showing up here. It should be, it's configured <laughs> to do so, but please just go ahead. And if you do have a question, either raise your hand or put it in chat and we'll try and keep up with you. And let's see, we're at 75%. So I will go ahead and share the results here. Okay, great. So yeah, most of you have your problems coming from, from major incidents. That makes a lot of sense. Or from agents working on incidents. Um, some from the coordinators and managers, not really from an analyst, and some from automation. And then secondary, again, there's a good spread of nearly all of those scenarios. Does anybody want to call anything out uh, specifically about you know, where the problems come from? Or is there, any, is there somewhere else that you, that you think should have been on this list as well? I mean, typically most problems do come from major incidents or your high priority um, incidents. Nothing else in chat, so. Okay, sounds good, we'll move on. Okay, so what I'm gonna do first of all is give you some highlights of what we did for the May release of um, problem for service operations workspace. And then we'll talk a little bit about what's coming very soon, as Janet was saying before, which is why we had the safe harbor slide. So first of all, and I'm just going to use SOW for now, because otherwise the, the, the session will be over. <laughs> but for SO, 
W problem version five, which was the May store release. Um, we, we brought an equivalent of what we've got in classic or the base version of problem into SOW. So before SOW 5.0, um, originally SOW was more of a tier one experience like agent workspace was before that. So you could create problems and problem tests in SOW, but to manage them, you would actually be directed to the classic experience. So, you know, understandably, and, and again, I think even on based on, based on past launch and learns, and if you were here this time last year as well, a lot of you were asking for being able to manage problems in SOW itself, as you already could do with incident and change. And we recently added major incident as well. And so from version five, problem coordinators can now manage problems and problem tests in SOW. And the reason it's coordinators is version five of SOW um, kind of has a minimum requirement of the ITIL role. So that's why it's the coordinators or higher. But we'll, we'll talk more about the, the future bits on that around version six when we get to that. So yeah, so coordinators can manage problems and problem tasks in SOW. The requirements to actually use SOW5 is you need to be on Washington, patch two or later, and using the base problem lifecycle. What do I mean by the base problem lifecycle? It means you've got this very long <laughs> plugin name enabled. So the, the naming convention is when we introduce our best practices, it normally has the release where we actually introduced it. So we, we introduced this lifecycle as part of the Madrid um, release a few, uh, you know, a while back. So this is the long version of the name, but it has Madrid state model inside there, but we just call it the base problem lifecycle. If you're not on Washington or you're not using the base problem lifecycle, you will still be directed to manage problems and problem tests in classic. If that's the case for you and you want to actually be able to, um, uh, to manage in SOW, then you should have a look at the problem management migration utility or PMMU for short. That's another store application that will help you migrate from kind of a customized version of problem that you were probably using from before Madrid. It will help you get back to the base or more like the base version of problem management so that then you'll be able to actually manage um, problems in SOW as well. So if, if you're not, um, so that's kind of more of a legacy scenario. So if you're not using that base problem lifecycle, that's how you can adopt it by using the problem management migration utility, which is kind of beyond the scope of this session, but we just wanted to call out how you can get there if that doesn't apply to you so far. So what have we done? So um, those of you that might have seen uh, SOW, we, we, already, we already had the problem record in there, um, but what we've done is we brought the lifecycle collections into the header. So now you can see things like in the new state, you can see an assess action, and when you're in the root cause analysis state, you've got kind of secondary actions and your primary action, the primary being the, the blue highlighted one. So in this case, you've got fix, cancel, mark, duplicate, and accept risk. So we basically brought equivalents of all of those classic lifecycle actions into SOW. So you can now manage the problems through the lifecycle inside of here as well. Um, we've also um, brought in the ability like we've got in classic to create known error articles and a known error article is just so your problem is typically not visible by regular employees in the company so for people that are outside of the service desk or outside <coughs> of the problem team what you want to do is if this is say for example it's got a high impact this problem so it's affecting a lot of people you would create a known error article from this problem and it's, it's just a type of knowledge article so it will show up wherever knowledge can be searched and it just gives them a heads up as to what's going on. And you can even include things like, you know, it will pull fields through from the problem statement, the description, the cause notes, and the workaround. So they can see if there's a workaround that they can apply themselves to self-serve as well. So think of the known error articles, kind of like the outward facing version of the problem record, basically. So we brought that in there as well. So you can also create those from the problem like you can in Classic. Um, We've also renamed something. So we had something in Classic called Communicate Workaround and Communicate Fix. The Communicate naming had been confusing people that were using Major Incident. They thought it'd be more like the communication plans and things that you have inside a Major Incident. So we've, we've made a slight change to this naming when we've gone into SOW. So it's now, it, it does the same job, but it's now called Share Workaround and Share Fix. And all it does is if you've got a workaround in your problem, when you click Share Workaround, that workaround, and it's actually handled on the incident side, but the incidents will listen to the problem saying, hey, I've got a workaround to share. They will then decide what to do with that uh, information if they, if they care about it at all. So for example, they could add a work note to the incident to say, 
is now a workaround and the same for a fix as well. So that's just the, the, the problem team's way of saying, hey, this information is now available um, and any incidents or even cases if you're using customer service management can actually make use of that information as well. And then lastly, so for those of you who might be in the legacy scenario where you're not using, you're not on the Washington version or you're not on the base problem lifecycle, you would see continue problem and continue problem task as well. So that's what we mean about you'd be directed to classic to actually move the problem through the life cycle. So you don't get the life cycle actions in this case. Okay, so that's what we did for version five. So now we're moving on to the sneak peek. And although we finished, we put all the, the, the finishing touches to this, Xanadu itself um, is not available for a couple of weeks yet. So SOW version six requires Xanadu. So everything I show you from this point onwards isn't quite out yet, but it will be soon. <laughs> so this stuff shouldn't really change because we basically finished working on it. It's just, it's not generally available just yet. Um, so there's some classic experience improvements that we've made in the Xanadu family release. So you can now reassess a problem task when you're in the work in progress state. You couldn't do that before. Um, when you're um, using the add all button in something we call the multi-record associator. So in the related list, when you click the add button in classic, if you click add all in there by mistake, um, what it would do is associate every incident that's not already associated with something to this problem, which might not be what you wanted to do. So basically there'll be a confirmation now if you click add all to just check that's actually what you wanted to do before it goes ahead and does it. Another thing that we did is any email notifications that are sent out, um, and whether it's for classic or SOW, any <laughs> notifications that we send out via email, we've added um, a redirect in there. So now you can configure so that when you click on to respond to an email notification, if you're set up as a user for SOW, it will take you to that record in SOW or if you're not, you'll be taken to that record in Classic. So you can configure whether the notifications will take users to SOW or to Classic. It doesn't change the notifications. It's just any notifications that are sent out now have this mechanism built in where it can redirect the users as you configured to either SOW or Classic. So that's a nice um, kind of uh, improvement there. Something else that we've done that's only small, but will actually help when we see version six is we relabeled the first reported by field. So it's still the same field name under the covers. It's just the labels change. We now call it origin task because it represents the task that led to this problem. So first reported by was confusing people and they thought it was like a person, not a task. So it just made a, a little bit of a tweak on there. And then lastly, and this is for new customers, um, so, or if you have, uh, if you um, reset your instance as well, the known error articles knowledge integration is now activated by default for new customers. It's something we weren't able to do in the past, but we've been finally able to do that. So that means if you're, you know, if you create a brand new instance, you will be able to create known errors straight away from problems. Whereas before you had to go and manually activate an additional plugin. Okay, the next bit, and this is really preparing for the future. So. We're, we've introduced initial support for problem models. Um, so those of you that may, might be familiar with change will know that change has change models. And so what we want to do is we've basically built problem models in a similar way to what we've done with uh, change models. And this is preparing for the future, as I say. So in the future, you'd be able to have like different scenarios for different types of problems. So you could have IT problems versus non-IT problems, um, or even different departments or different setups or potentially even like high priority problems might be one that we introduce as well. So think of them being able to have different scenarios for different classes of problem in the future in the same way that you can with change models. So it's something that we've introduced now um, so that customers who are either upgrading or starting new will be able to benefit from this stuff, even though we're not really doing a lot with it right now, the foundation's there to be able to build on this in the future. So we could introduce additional types of problem model and so one of the benefits of a problem model is it allows you to tailor the problem or the problem task experience per scenario. So out of the six states that we ship, you can decide which, which of those states are shown. You can also define automatic transition between those states if you want to, and you can optionally define flows that you would use with your model in your life cycle as well. So that's some of the benefits of models. And in the future, what we're also looking to be able to do is instead of having global properties like we've got for problem today, we want to be able to introduce 
properties at the model level. So you could have differences between different models just by setting different properties as well. That's not there yet, but it's something we're looking to be able to do in the future as well. Um, and lastly, um, problem models are switched off by default, um, which might seem a bit strange because it's a new thing that we want to have. And even for new customers, they won't get it. But the reason is that um, because Xanadu, but basically SOW version five was based on Washington. SOW six is what's uh, needed for Xanadu. And so if you've got SOW five uh, or the Washington version, then it knows nothing about problem models. So you can't, we can't actually enable problem models in Xanadu by default. What we do is if you do want to do that, wait till version six comes out if you want to enable problem models, um, because that way version six knows about problem models and the, the, the older way of doing things. It knows about both, whereas version five only knows the older way of doing things. And if you, if you do enable problem models, you will then be directed to Classic to manage those because SOW itself doesn't understand problem models with version five. And so there are three models that we ship for this initial problem models. There's one as a general model for the problem, and there's a general and a root cause analysis model for the problem task. So basically they've just match the general, uh, generic problem that we've already had, and also the general and RCA problem task types that we've had as well. So again, this is just, think of this as foundational stuff. You don't need to do anything with this right now. We're just, we wanted to introduce it now so that upgrade and new customers will be able to benefit from having this stuff there so that in the future, it'd be easier for us to introduce new types of model as well. Okay, so what else have we done in August? That was kind of behind the scenes stuff. Now we've got some more front end work. So we've added the dynamic overview and the record information contextual sidebar panel for the problem record. And I'll show you this in the demo in a minute. And um, problem task analysts, so remember I said before, they are the limited access role, so they're not a problem coordinator. So um, before um, problem task analysts in version five could not get into SOW, but from version six, they can. So from version six, all the problem users can actually come into SOW and get to problems and manage them if they've got the permissions to manage those problems as well. So what do you need to be able to update this? Well, you'd need the Xanadu family release when it's, when it's out. Um, and um, so, yeah, because that provides support for problem models and um, version six also supports the problem models as well. And also uptaking what we've done in Xanadu, you can now reassess a problem task from work in progress, just like you'd be able to do in classic with Xanadu as well. We've, we've also brought some shortcuts in. So if you've got additional products for um, Agile 2.0, so that includes defects and enhancements, you'll be able to quickly create those records as well from the drop down, down menu where you create a, um, a change at the top. And if you've got the continual improvement initiatives, uh, sorry, continual improvement management product, you'll be able to create improvement initiatives from that same drop down as well. And last but not least, uh, on this bit, we've, um, can, we're have we now bringing some configuration for problem into the SOW admin center as well. So you'll be able to configure the problem overview tab and details tab and the details tab for your problem task as well in one place. So yeah, to, to actually use this new stuff, to, to basically to use SOW6, you need Xanadu or later, and you need the base problem lifecycle, like I said, for version five as well. So if you've not got this problem uh, plugin installed, then you would use the problem, ma problem management migration utility again. So otherwise the requirements are basically the same, it's just that Xanadu instead of Washington is needed for SOW6. I'll give you a quick look at a couple of screens and then we'll go into a demo. So the overview tab, um, so when you're creating a brand new problem, so this is when you're creating it from scratch, you get an overview tab. So you now get the life cycle again, like we've done in change already. So you can see where you are in the life cycle of this problem. And we've got a summary section and you can decide what sections are shown in the different stages of the problem, you know, new SS RCA, for example, um, and also what fields are shown inside of there as well. That's all configurable. And in the root cause analysis um, phase, and the reason this is a dynamic overview is like change, the, the sections that appear and the order of the sections is configurable. So you'll see different sections appearing as you move through the life cycle of the problem as well to more focus you in on the information that's needed at this point in the life cycle of the problem. If you've got people that are um, more familiar with the classic and they're more 
um, maybe advanced users or prefer you know, that forms based experience, they can still use the details tab. So if they don't want to use the overview tab, they can jump into the details tab. And that's the equivalent of the, of the classic forms experience that we've already got as well with all the fields that you would see inside of it. So on the admin center side, uh, so if you go into the SOW admin center, there's a new section in there for problem management. So you can look at the settings for the problem record. So if you don't want it, you can switch the overview tab off on your instance as well. But otherwise, you've, there's the containers and section fields. Again, the same as we've done with change, you can decide what sections are shown in each state of the problem and what fields are shown in those containers as well. And you can also define the fields that are shown in the details tab as well for the problem and the problem task. So as I say, we're starting to move more of the configuration for problem into the admin center as well. Okay, so demo time. So Matt, um, yeah. we've, we've had some questions. One of the, the general themes was around problem models. Uh -huh. and can people create their own problem models? You can, it's just, at the minute, so, so we've just introduced the initial support. So if you create your own problem model, you would, there's no way to pick them up front at the minute because what we, what we want to work on for the future is we want to be able to switch different models. So you might start off as a general problem. And then, for example, this scenario is on here that's determined that this should be a high priority problem. So you would switch to a high priority model instead. So we haven't built the picker in up front for now. So we just support the default. Um, there's a default model. You can decide which model is your default, basically. And that's the one that will get used for the problem until we introduce other types of problem in the future. But for problem tasks, because you can already introduce, because you can already do problem task types yourself, you can already create um, models for those and it will prompt you to, you know, which model do you want to use when you're creating that problem task? It's just, so you can, the short version is you can create problem models, but really there's only one default one used right now. Great. Thanks for that. But it won't stay like that. In the future, we plan to build on that. But what we need to do is get the foundational plumbing in, <laughs> if that makes sense. So what you could do potentially is if you you could make your own model um, that has different bits and pieces inside it from ours and leave ours untouched. So you've got our base one and then you could make your own default problem model if you wanted to. Um, and then, you know, you just won't be able to pick it up front. Uh, like you can with the change right now. That's the only difference. Okay. One of the other questions was whether or not if you start with a model and in the future, would you be able to change models? So not right now, but yeah, that's the idea. So um, not for a problem task because problem tasks are more short lived. So it, the same as we did with problem task types, we, we're not planning on switching those, but for a problem, when we introduce other types of problem, we definitely want a way to switch them, either an automated mechanism or a manual mechanism for certain users. So yeah, we definitely plan in the future when we introduce other problem models to be able to switch between them as well. And again, simply right now, and it might not be like this, just think of example, like every problem starts as a general problem, but then might switch automatically or you'd switch it to a different model. Um, and we might also make it so that certain users can actually pick the problem model up front. You know, if you're not just a, a general user creating a problem, maybe if you're part of a problem team, you know what type of model it should be up front, maybe you'd be able to pick that. But again, that's not there right now, but that's stuff we're looking at for the future. Right, and the other question was whether or not they can use problem SOW in Washington. I believe they can, they just don't have all of the same uh, management functions in SOW yet, right? That's right, Janet, yeah. So. Think of it, so the biggest difference is the overview tab isn't there. So the overview tab that I'll show you in this demo, that's not there and the, and the record information isn't there. Um, but otherwise, most of it's the same, to be fair. Perfect. Or you. similar, similar enough. <laughs> like the life cycle, you can do the life cycle starting from version five. As long as you're on the base problem life cycle, you'll get all the, the actions to move through the life cycle starting from version five. It's just when you go to version six, like Janet said, you get some extra UI goodness in there as well. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is there's, uh, and we're gonna be adding in the future, so we've not done it in, in this release, but we'll be adding problem under here as well. So you can quickly create one from the plus menu. But for the minute, there's two ways of creating a problem that I'm gonna show you. One is you can come into one of the lists inside of Service Operations Workspace and say new, 
And then lightning fast. It's always the way when there's a demo. <laughs> It comes in there, and again, it's using this dynamic overview already. So we're showing you where you are in the life cycle. Obviously, this is a new problem. It hasn't been saved yet, but here's the summary that we're showing. So I'm not going to continue with this one. I just want to show you this is the brand new experience if you do it. So this is if you manually create a problem. This is what it will look like, basically. But what I'm going to do for the, for the rest of this is, again, like most of you said, it's far more likely you're coming from an incident. Oh, sorry, what's your question? I'll tell you when I get back that I've got a one question. Uh, no, I think that somebody accidentally unmuted. Let me. Okay, fair enough. Okay, so the more common way for, for most of you is to actually create this. So I'm in an incident here. I'm just going to come into here and create a problem from this incident. So a problem's now been created from that incident and linked back to that problem. So we just. One second, I accidentally muted you. <laughs> muted again, double muted. Okay, there hopefully you can hear Thank me now. You. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah, that pesky Matt's talking. Let's shut him up. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was in the incident. I created a problem, which is the, the common way, as you all said before, to, to create the problem. So, now we've got the problem record that's linked back to that incident. And so you remember I mentioned before the origin task. So you'll see there's the origin task inside of here. And we also, part of the record information, we're now showing an origin card. So you can see that this problem came from an incident, a little bit about it, who opened it. And if there's, this has some special cases, like if this was coming from a major incident or a major case, it will tell you that it's actually a major incident or a major case. So you don't even need to click on it to look. You can just see at a glance, basically. So it's just a nice little... Um, tidy improvement inside of there but the origin all of this record in, information is new and um, then there's you know who the who the problem's assigned to and then we, we've also got our milestones through the problem as you move through the life cycle and um, so if i wanted to i could edit the summary and come in here and make some changes but i'm just going to skip that for now but what i can do is again this is more of a flow experience so i've got the summary and you can decide again in each state, which sections are being shown, what order those sections are being shown in, and whether they're expanded or collapsed. So we, we expand the summary in the initial state, in the new state. What I can do is assign this. So I'm just going to assign this to myself. And I'm, I'm logged in as a problem coordinator right now. So I've assigned the problem to myself. So you can see it's over there. Um, and then I can see the impact. There's already one incident and one CI affected by this, which we pulled over from um, from the incident. So if I just click on the incidents, and again, you can do a lot of this um, also through the related records. It's just this is a shortcut to a lot of the actions that you would do up there. I can come down here, and this is the multi record associator, as I mentioned before. So I could say add, and I could find some additional um, incidents, for example, to bring into this problem. So I'm just going to add these two. But you know, you could do that. And what you're trying to do here is um, as you're assessing this, you're trying to find the true scope of this problem. Are there any other records that should be part of it, basically? So you can go and add more things inside of here. If there was an outage, you know, you could refer to that. If this problem's been marked as a duplicate of another, that would show up inside of here as well. How many how many other problems are a duplicate of this one? Um, so that's, that's basically the impact that we're doing for this. Um, and if you want to, you can also come down and get to your work notes as well inside of here. But that, that's enough for the um, for the assessment bit right now. And we know that this is an issue that we're going to work on. So it's an email server outage, basically. So what I could do here is I could, I could cancel the problem or I could mark it as a duplicate of an existing one. Um, but I'm just going to confirm this as a problem that I want to work on. So it will move to the root cause analysis phase. And you see the milestones update as we're going through the life cycle of this problem. So again, the, the layouts changed slightly. So the summary is now collapsed. And then we can add analysis information resolution information. And we've also got some type of tasks. So these are for the problem and fix tasks, just to make it easier to see what's going on inside of here. So if if I was a coordinator, which typically you are when you're um, on a, uh, a bigger problem, you tend to coordinate this with subject matter experts. If you need help from the subject matter expert, you can create a problem task. And in this case, a root cause analysis one. And what I can do is I've just got some shortcuts to save me a bit of time. And I can just set this up, put some information inside of here, um, and then save this. Actually, I'll sign it to myself as well right now, just for demo purposes. 
And then what I can do as well is I can actually start to fill this out or I can say, I'm ready to start working on this problem task. And then when I've done all my work, I could actually fill it out in the form where I can just go to complete. And what we do is we've got a thing called a mandatory field modal. We use this in problem as well. When you try and change to a new state that needs more information that's not already filled out, it will bring up a modal to say, hey, please fill this information out. So here, you know, we need to enter a course code. So we'll just say it's a software issue. There's the cause. And then here's what I'm proposing to do to fix this. So, you know, we're just going to do some more frequent automated testing for this issue because it was a failure of a mechanism that wasn't working. And we can optionally provide a workaround inside of here as well. But once I've done that, I've done my work, basically, I've done my root cause analysis. I can mark this as complete. Uh, and then what I'll do is I'll just jump back to the problem. And what we don't have at the minute is an automated way to copy that stuff over. But this is what part of what the coordinator would do. You go to add analysis, and then you would just um, basically bring over that information for now. In the future, we hope to have some sort of integration to bring this over um, without you needing to do this. OK, so I'm now just putting in there some information. And then I can also put in the resolution information at this point as well. So that's the, the resolution information is your fixed notes. And what's happening here as well is when I'm filling these things out, you'll see because we've provided a workaround now, we can now share the workaround. So I could click share workaround and that will be shared with the incident. So I can just drop back to the incident <clears throat> second. Into the details tab, you can see that a work note's been added um, with that workaround inside of it as well. Which means now those incidents could be resolved even though the problem is still being worked. Exactly. Yeah, thanks, Janet. Um, and then, so the same thing as well for the fix. So we've, and these these options are actually in the overflow menus as well. It's just, we brought them into a place where basically we try to put the actions where you're actually doing the work basically. And the same thing with share fix. If there's a, and there's a bug in this instance, it's fixed in the GA where it, it's not showing the, really, the, the fixed notes, but it will do in the, the GA version. But if we're going to edit, you'll see it's actually inside of there. So it's just a, a little glitch inside this at the minute. Um, but again, I could share the fix from here, and then that would share it to any incidents or cases that are interested in the, the fix information. Um, and then what we're showing you is a list of the problem tasks and change requests that you've created for this thing as well. Um, but at this point, I've got what I need to do. I'm just going to mo move forward to fixing this information. And um, so, yeah, we've got the details, just double checking that we've got everything we need in there. So we can say, yeah, good, we'll submit that. And then we move forward to the fix phase. And so for the fix phase, really what you're doing is you're creating your change requests. So you can either do that from the overview or you can do it from the menus up here as well. Um, and then say the other thing is the, the um, creating the, um, the known error. So if we come back to the analysis section, I could create a known error article from this problem. So this is if you know it's an ongoing issue, you want to basically let people know what's going on. So we can create this new type of knowledge article that will be linked back to the problem. You can save this, we can publish it, and then it will show up in the same places that your knowledge search would go as well. So it actually just let you know employees or people outside of the problem team or the service desk <clears throat> know about this as well. So those people who don't have access to the problem. OK, so yeah, now what, what we do here is I'm not going to go through doing all the changes, but you could come and create a change request at this point, as I say, or a defect or an enhancement or a SIM opportunity. If you've got those other products as well, those extra options would show up. But yeah, here you can go in and create your change as normal. That will be then linked to this problem. And then um, what we do is we show all of those records under the uh, problem and fix or the fix tasks. So this is where all of the records that are effectively a fix for this problem are going to live. And so when all of those fixes are done, what we'll actually do is we'll notify the person that's assigned to this problem. So in this case, it's coordinator A that Basically, it's your, it's time to come back and review the problem. We do the same thing with the problem tasks as well. When all the problem tasks are completed, we'll let the assigned to person know that they're done so that they can come and review the problem. So they don't need to keep going back and checking manually. It, the system will notify them when all of the related work has been done, basically. Um, but in this case, we're going to assume everything's been done. And we just click um, Resolve. This problem's resolved. And then it's completed. And then say, just going down here, you can see all the different milestones that we've gone through 
for this problem as well, like who took them when they took those actions as well. So in the future, we'll probably introduce some sort of timeline, but at the minute, we just wanted to show in a nice, uh, quick overview way, basically. But yeah, that in a nutshell is what we've done for um, SOW in version six with the overview um, itself and the record information panel. Any question? Oh, actually, yeah. What I can do is quickly just also, if I just switch user, uh, be thinking about any questions if you want to, but I'm just going to go over and I'll share the admin center quickly. So what you find if you type in service operations workspace, the name's quite long, so it doesn't quite fit in that menu, but it says admin center. So if you go to overview or configurations, that's how you get to the admin center itself. And then once you're inside the admin center, and there's gonna be more and more settings and things that come into here over time. So this will be the one stop shop or jumping off point to actually configure anything to do with SOW over time. So if I come down to here, we've got a problem management um, set. We've also added change as well recently and problem and major incidents. So if I click on configure for there for problem, it will jump me into where we saw in those screenshots before. So I'm now in the problem record. So if I wanted to, I could turn off the, the, the entire overview tab from, um, from problem if I wanted to. I can configure the containers that show up for the different states. I can configure the fields that show up inside those containers. And also, you know, what goes in the details tab as well. And similar for the problem task, it's just the details tab. But as you can see, we're starting to move more configuration into the admin center to make it easier for you to find that stuff and to get to those configurations. Yeah, any questions? Um, yeah, Matt, is Cyrus speaking. Can you hear me? I can. Um, yeah, question from my side. So um, we're using the problem management module very much as a, a tracking tool to check people's tasks. But really what we're using is excel or word documents you know to come up with a root cause analysis template where we'll ask specific questions like what's the financial benefit of doing this problem um the five whys uh, mm -hmm. was this detected by monitoring if not why not so you know all of this stuff which when it's in an attachment obviously we can't interrogate it run reports query it, etc um mm -hmm. so can you say a word about how if there's any plans to bring that kind of stuff into the problem module to make it more yeah. than just a task tracking tool? Yes. Yeah. Hi, Cyrus. Thanks for that question. That leads me nicely onto a bit of the futures. Yes. Um, we are planning on bringing some of that stuff in there. I can't say much about how at the minute, but if you want to be part of the research for that, if you let, um, if you let myself and Janet know, um, yeah. we can basically let the research team know, because we're going to, there should be a research session that we're conducting later this year. And one of the focus areas is RCA um, for that research. So oh, yes, okay. we are we are looking yeah. into it. It's it's on our list. <laughs> mm. It's one of our top priority items. Basically, is the RCA piece, um, and we'd love to hear more. And any examples you can share of what you're doing is also helpful for us as well, as we're building something uh, yeah. that's a bit more general. Yeah, thanks for our contact, you then, because I'm also having conversations with Harsh about the MI side of things. So yeah, yeah, I'll reach out. Thank you very much. Perfect. Yeah, thanks, Cyrus. And, and another question, actually, from me before we go back in, is <laughs> I, I haven't had a chance to ask you yet, but it just came up here. Post-implementation review that now is being created from major incident, are we going to find a way to make sure that's brought into any Rob problem record created? Or can we yes. put it on the list? Yeah, so... I what, what I'm thinking right now, and again, this is all of this, like from the six, from the 106.0, we're talking futures, but this is further away right now, the, the, the RCA and this. But yeah, I, what I plan is going back to problem models. I plan to introduce high priority model uh, problems. And so it's the, we don't want to call it major because that's ITIL specific, but think of like your higher priority things where, you know, there's, it's more centrally managed. Typically there's more eyes on it. You need to do the root cause and document it more um, 
strictly because you're sharing it with the stakeholders or external people or regulators. Um, and then you'd be able to, you need to meet around that. And also you need to do a post meeting as well. So we plan to bring all those sort of things in over time as part of that high priority. But as we do that, the idea is that by bringing those capabilities in, you know, it'll be at the model level. So you'll be able to say, do I want to have this part? Do I want to include these things as part of the model? In, including things like um, approvals. We don't really do anything with approvals right now in the base version of problem, but that's because we don't really have the high priority problem bit yet. Um, but as we start to add that, I see those things coming in as well. So I think a lot of it is, um, but obviously we're talking to Harsh and we're drafting off what they're doing, the major incident as well. And we've also drafted a bit of what change are doing and vice versa, you know, we're learning from each other as well as we go. But yes, the short version is we do plan to start adding that stuff in there over time as well. And the communications as well. You know, so again, for those high priority problems, you need to have communications you're sending out as well. Um, so we're planning to start bringing those aspects to problem as well. But it wouldn't necessarily apply to all problems. That's why the models would come in. Certain, you know, like general problems probably don't need that level of information, basically, and that, <clears throat> that, um, those follow-ups and things like that. Thanks, Ben. No problem. Thanks, thanks for asking, Janet. <laughs> I did share your email with a couple of folks who are interested in the research side. Okay, perfect. Any other questions? Otherwise, I think we've got one more poll, and then we could always do a few more questions after that. But um, yeah, so if there's anything burning right now, ask away. Otherwise, I think we'll jump to our... Let me just go back to the slides a sec. There's one question yeah. here I'm not familiar with. Uh, the one guided tour for how to create a problem in task in Classic, they couldn't create because they're in separate tables. Are you able to have one guided tour in SOW for problems and tasks? Yes, so that's an art. So we wanted to do it for version six, but we didn't have time to do it. So we're looking at that for 6.1 to have a, basically is think of it like it's a, a general um, or an overview, like, you know, of this about using a problem record or using the problem task record. We're planning to have a guided tour for SOW for each of those two records in version 6.1. Currently, that's what we're looking at. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. No problem. I don't think okay, so. Oh, when is 6.1 slated to be released? <laughs> Stay That's tuned. Next year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's um, hopefully towards the end of this year. But again, we can't give specific dates on that right now because, again, functionality might change. We're only in the development of that um, of 6.1 right now. So things may move out as well, potentially. But if all goes to plan, Hopefully before the end of the year, 6.1 will be out. And, and we'll again, make sure we keep you all posted through live on service now or other mechanisms. Exactly. Rely on community. Yeah. Too. Matt's been really but good. Again, things that. can change a little bit, but that's the current thinking right now, is it be before the end of the year? Right. For that functionality. And with that, he's asking, when are you planning on updating problem <laughs> management features? <laughs> so Obviously, a lot of you are using it already, but are you going to look at using problem models in Classic UI mm -hmm. or in SOW or just managing problems in SOW? So if you can give us some idea of your time frame, it helps. It helps us drive roadmap when we know how much customer their interest there is or how much pressure there is for specific um, applications and product features. So please keep that in mind. And let's see, we're at 40%. We're going to give it a couple of minutes or a minute at least. What I missed off this was that I think someone already said they were doing problems in SOW. I missed that option off. <laughs> so if, if you're already doing oh, it, feel free to yeah, check whichever sure. one is the closest to what you're doing. Well, I guess that's the one that says 2024, <laughs> isn't it? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Interesting. Normally, most people think of that being after today <laughs> it sounded like some of you were already doing that right now we're, we're making people think that's for sure exactly. I'm, I'm seeing the numbers go up it's just taking a little longer <laughs> <laughs> oh and here here's a fair answer no plans yet because this is the first i'm hearing of it absolutely that's a valid response and that's why we're doing these sessions as well just to make sure people are aware so 
Um, it's probably fair to say we've been a little bit quieter on problem recently, but we've done two decent releases this year as well. There's the one in May. Um, and the reason originally we were planning to do everything we'd shown in 6.0, but we managed to bring some bits forward into version five in May. And the reason we did that and we're able to do that is for customers that are able to move to Washington, um, they would be able to benefit from at least being able to manage problems um, in SOW because they're on Washington. So yeah, we were luckily enough, we managed to move a good chunk of stuff forward or pull it forward into that May release as well. So we split the release basically into two. Interesting. <laughs> we have one <laughs> customer is it responding, no plans yet, but if I know my problem team now that they've heard, it'll be on 2025. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, I like that. Okay. So we seem to have a few last respondents this time, but that's okay. I will end this at this point and let you take a look, Matt. So this one's a little harder to, to see yeah. because it's colors, but you've definitely got, you've, during 2024, 21% um, are managing in SOW. During 2025, 57%, so that's excellent beyond maybe 7% and others unsure. Uh, using the problem models in classic UI, 32% say they may do that in 2024. And mm. we've got uh, 36 in 2025. And nice. then using problem models in SOW during 2024, very low, of course, since mm. we're just introducing. And during 2025, 43%. So that's, that's excellent. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And also bearing in mind that the models require Xanadu as well. So you'd also need to be on the family release as well to even do that. So yeah, that's that's good that, that some of you are even thinking of doing that um, this year as well. So yeah, I'm glad we started introducing it early then because um, basically the idea was that, so that people could get a head start on it before we've added any um, other types or other models for problem as well. But yeah, if, if any last questions, otherwise we're more or less at time. So. I don't think twice. so. <laughs> Perfect. Well, thank you very much, everybody, for your time today and feedback and questions and things. Hopefully it was a useful session. And it sounds like quite a few of you have got plans to start using this this year or next year. So, yeah, I we'll look forward to speaking to you again. Have a lovely this day, everybody. Great. Thank you very much, Matt. Truly appreciate it. And we'll see you all next week for our change session. Bye. Bye, everybody.